Israel's Foreign Minister Israel Kaz has rejected proposals for a ceasefire in Lebanon after the U.S. and France called for a 21-day halt in the fighting to allow time to reach a diplomatic solution. This comes as a video released by the IDF today claims to show strikes and Hezbollah targets in Lebanon. There's more in this report. Israel's Foreign Minister Israel Katz has turned down requests for a ceasefire in Lebanon while reiterating that they will continue to fight until they achieve victory and the safe return of the residents of the north to their homes. The statement was made after Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he has instructed the military to keep fighting and has not yet given his response to the ceasefire proposal. This comes after the U.S. announced a ceasefire proposal that would see the war between Lebanon's Hezbollah and Israel stop for 21 days and provide room for diplomatic negotiations. A proposal devised by the U.S. and France and endorsed by Australia, Canada, European Union, Germany, Italy, Japan, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates and Qatar. Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, called for the protection of civilians and an end to the hostilities. It's Mr. Guterres, along with other officials, made their stand known during the Security Council meeting in New York. Civilians must be protected. Civilian infrastructure must not be targeted. The safety and security of all UN personnel and assets must be ensured. International law must be respected. To all sides, let us say in one clear voice, stop the killing and destruction, turn down the rhetoric and threats, step back from the brink. An all-out war must be avoided at all costs. It would surely be an all-out catastrophe. The people of Lebanon, as well as the people of Israel and the people of the world, cannot afford Lebanon to become another Gaza. Unfortunately, the United States and United Kingdom, unwavering support to Israel has given a carte blanche to them for all sorts of sinister behavior. The ongoing aggression against Lebanon is fueled by the failure of the international community and in particular by the United Nations Security Council to hold Israel accountable for war crimes and genocide in Gaza. Reports say nearly half a million people in Lebanon have been displaced due to Israeli attacks with hundreds of vehicles backed up in queues at the Syrian border. Recall that Israeli raids on Lebanon on Monday killed at least 558 people in the deadliest day of violence since Lebanon's 1975 to 1990 civil war, sending people fleeing for their lives. Following the surprise attack, hospitals have been reported to be struggling to cope with the injuries inflicted. We have seen uh, an unprecedented uh, number of casualties from the uh, consecutive attacks that occurred uh, on Lebanon. Uh, the total number uh, of uh, those who were killed is around more than 700. There is also a large number of them who are healthcare workers uh, or whether killed or whether injured. Uh, more than 20 uh, ambulances or firefighting machines were also uh, targeted. China, in reaction, has had the Chinese embassy in Lebanon warn its citizens against traveling to the country amid Israel's continuing air offensive. The embassy also activated an emergency response plan and advised citizens in Lebanon to leave. Various countries have already urged their citizens to leave or avoid traveling to Lebanon this week, including Italy, Belgium, the UK, Russia, India, Australia and Malaysia.
Joining me now is international relations expert and global affairs analyst, Bolade Dira, uh, for more on this development. Sade Dira, thank you for joining us on The World Now. So considering Israel has history of taking a hardline stance on peace and security matters, how does this rejection of a ceasefire proposal align with um, its overall vision for Israel's foreign policy, particularly regarding Lebanon? I think that, um, as you just mentioned, it is uh, perfectly um, aligned in terms of how Israel acts. Israel takes its security very seriously. It understands that it is one country that uh, is in the midst of enemies. It's surrounded by enemies, uh, uh, to, to, to say. And uh, since October, the October 7th attacks, uh, it's been fighting a two-pronged war, one in Gaza and one uh, in southern uh, Lebanon, where Hezbollah has been uh, uh, you know, barraging and sending rockets to the northern part of Israel. So in terms of the ceasefire deal and what the proposals are, I think that it's very unlikely that Israel will jeopardize the opportunity uh, to get residents who have been displaced, more than 70,000 of them in northern Israel, uh, to get them back to their homes. It will jeopardize that for any ceasefire deal being proposed by the U.S. or by other countries. So yes, uh, to answer your question, Israel takes its security seriously and it will do whatever it needs to do uh, to assure that, uh, to assure its security. That's what we've seen uh, from Israel in the past. The concern, however, is that hope Lebanon doesn't turn out the way of Gaza. Uh, what are the potential consequences of this rejection of a 21-day halt in fighting, especially given the international community's call for a diplomatic solution? And how do you think this will impact on Israel's relationships with countries like the U.S. and France? Uh, well, to your last question, whether it will impact uh, the relationship with the U.S. and France, I don't think it would. Uh, the U.S. has, uh, forget what the U.S. says sometimes in, in uh, you know, the tongue-in-cheek attempts to, to criticize uh, Israel's war in Gaza. Is the U.S. stands steadfast step, step in alignment with, the U, uh, with, with Israel. Don't forget that Israel has a powerful uh, lobby, uh, lobbying group, the APAC, in the U.S., that, uh, that helps it, uh, you know, push some of its policies within the circles of the White House. But more importantly, I think that uh, the, the relationships that are more, perhaps more concerning that Israel might, be, uh, might, might stand to lose are the ones uh, that it's forged with uh, under the Abraham Accords. So, for example, uh, um, uh, the ones with uh, countries like Sudan, uh, um, countries within the Middle East, uh, the potential uh, relationship, uh, diplomatic relationship it was going to establish with Saudi Arabia. I think that is definitely in uh, jeopardy. Saudi Arabia said that mm. it's not going to uh, normalize relationship with Israel until the issue of Palestine is, is settled. You did. But yep. I think more broadly that the... Cons yes. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Didra. I think more broadly, to, to, regarding your question about whether Lebanon can go the way of Gaza, I think there is a massive potential for that, at least for Israel, until there is a clear uh, indication that its citizens that, has been that have been displaced uh, in the northern part of Israel since October 7th are able to return back to their homes and uh, the, the rockets and uh, missile attacks coming from southern Lebanon are stopped. I don't think that Israel is going to uh, take any chances. Uh, 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 with any ceasefire deal. So I think that Lebanon uh, is, is, uh, is on the first stages of uh, a full-blown war with Israel. On one hand is Israel's position on defending its uh, territorial integrity and also advancing the welfare of its people. But there is also the other perspective on how well it's doing winning the war of diplomacy. In light of Kad's past controversies, uh, his remarks on Poland and Turkey, how might this kind of um, diplomatic style influence on the tone and direction of Israel's foreign, uh, foreign policy, particularly in times of conflict? I think, I, I think for me, one of the things that I, has, has been most concerning since October 7th is the lack of sensibility, uh, at least political sensibility by the Israeli government to criticisms from uh, from international actors. You could see that, well, where, where, whereas you have governments that have 
kept faith with Israel, like the U.S. government, like the uh, uh, U.K. and many, uh, the, many of the Western and European partners. The citizens of this country, on the other hand, have turned against Israel. And that's because Israel is losing that serious uh, uh, um, uh, battle for uh, propaganda and information. Uh, and a, a part of it is because of the way it's persecuted the war. Nobody says that Israel does not have a right to defend itself after October 7th. But at the same time, you have to do that in alignment with international law. And we saw the way that it prosecuted the war in, uh, in Gaza, where 40, 40 something thousand cities, um, uh, Palestinians have died, most of them children, most of them women. And we're seeing the same thing also in Lebanon now. More than 700 people have died. A lot of them during the page attacks were children. More than 21 children died during the page attacks. And this kind of indiscriminate attack for you, for me, is quickly turning Israel into a pariah state. And that's where the concern for me is. It is. Israel has a right to defend itself against Lebanon. Let's be mm. clear about that. But it has to do it in confinement and in alignment with international law. Well, the world would have to hope for alternative solutions or compromises uh, that can be explored to address Israel's security concerns while also advancing diplomatic efforts. And we're also Absolutely. hoping that we'll see more international mediators pay, uh, play some key roles in this regard. That's our time. Well, I did, you know, international relations expert and global affairs analyst. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. We'll return with more right after this break. Stay with us.